So now that we have Git and GitHub up and running on our machines, uh, let's take a moment to learn some basic terminal commands. Uh, and these are commands that I use 80% of the time. And these are the commands that we're going to learn, these commands right here. And so we're going to learn print working directory, change directory, going like up a level or going into a directory. We'll see both those. We'll look at list. That's what LS stands for to me, or list, list all. <laughs> I don't know if that's the official acronym. That's how it is in my head. Clear and remove recursively with force some file name or some directory name. So you could use remove just for a file name, and that would be like this. Let me just copy that for a second. Copy and paste it. There we go. And uh, this would be a directory name. Dir, and that would just be a file name. And we could just do remove file name. And then we could also do a make dir and some uh, folder name or some dir name. And so we'll learn make dir. That's a good one to have in there. And then we'll also learn cat. And cat prints out the contents of a file. Not sure why it's called cat. Maybe concatenate this to the terminal. I don't know. All right, so if you know those commands, feel free to move on to the next video. If you don't know those commands, this is awesome because you're going to learn the command line interface working at the terminal, and these basic commands are what you'll use like the vast majority of the time. All right, so the first one is just print working directory. So I just click over here in my terminal. I don't know why it's giving me that weird white line. Print working directory. There we go. So there's print working directory. It shows me I am in Todd's recording PC at the temp folder. Well, how does that correspond to like, you know, if I was looking at this in a graphical user interface, not a command line interface, which is this CLI, but a graphical user interface, GUI, GUI. Well, that would be the same as being in my C drive, users, Todd recording PC, temp. And so here you can see I'm C users, Todd recording PC, temp. And here I'm in Todd's recording PC temp. C users Todd recording PC temp. Same location. I can get these folders to show up right here by doing a list. So ls lists everything. So here we have index and we have main. We have index and we have main. How do you know that's HTML? How do you know that's CSS? I could change the view. So I could come over here to view and I could say, show me the details. And now I see, hey, this is a HTML document, that's a CSS, JetBrains WebStorm. It just says JetBrains WebStorm. It doesn't say CSS. It's associated. How could I see the file extensions? If I wanted to see those here in the graphical user interface, just like an FYI, I could go to options right here, change folder and search options, and then go to view. And I could say, where are file extensions? Uh, hide extensions for known file types. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to hit apply, hit OK. Now I can see the HTML and the CSS. The reason they hide those for most users is because they don't want people coming in here and deleting the file extension because the file extension is how your computer, Windows, associates this file type. A CSS file is going to be opened by WebStorm. That's how they figure it out. All right. So anyhow, uh, we've learned print working directory. We've learned LS. We could also do an LS-LA, which is a list, list all. And so here you can see my index.html, main CSS. And then these are read, write privileges right over here. So they're in groups of three, uh, read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. So it tells you basically like user, owner, group, different stuff like that. It's a Unix deal, but who has read, write, execute permissions? So that's a little bit more detail than we want to get into, but I just want to point out you have three different classes of users and they have different read, write, execute permissions. And as we get further into learning web programming, there's a point at which we'll learn about that. All right, so we've learned print working directory. We have learned list and list all. And we have learned uh, <laughs> just those three, print working directory, list, and list all. Now uh, we're going to do a clear. So we've seen that already. So we've got that one. And uh, I want to do a cat. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to list again. I have those files. And I'm going to do a cat index.html. And so that just printed out what's in that file. Or I could do a cat uh, main and I, I could just type the first part of the file name and then hit tab and it completes it. So there I, I, I printed out what's in main CSS. So that's kind of fun. And then uh, I'm going to clear that again. And what if uh, what if I wanted to add a directory? So make dir some uh, 
you know, I don't know what to call it, make dir uh, assets, right? And so now if I list everything in there, I've got a folder assets. So how would I change into assets? I just do a CD, change dir, change directories, and go into assets. Now if I print my working directory, you can see I'm in assets. How do I go up a level? Just like that. That's all I have to do. And if I print dir working directory, you can see I'm in temp. So that takes a second for most students. <laughs> if you're seeing that for the first time, you're like, wait a minute, what just happened? Let me slow it down. And uh, here, right, I've got those directories. To change into assets, I just do a CD and then go into assets. And I've changed into the assets directory. So I print the working directory. I can see I'm now in assets. You can also see that, by the way, over here, right there. And that little tilde means like uh, from my home directory, that's basically the abbreviation for home directory. So you could even do a CD and just tilde, and that takes you to your home directory, right? I'm just at tilde right now, right there, tilde. And so now I'm at like my user's home directory. And uh, I could also like if I was in temp still, so now I'm in, I'm in the home directory forward slash temp. And if I print the whole path out, you could see that C users Todd temp. I could also instead of doing CD tilde, I could just do CD, and that's like a shortcut, and it takes you straight back to your home directory. So change directory, go into the temp folder, right? And let me clear that out. And I'm in my temp folder, and that has my assets. So change directory, go into assets. Now I'm in my assets folder, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm done in there. Let me go up a level. Now I'm back in my temp directory. Let me go up one more level. Now I'm back in my 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 user's home directory, and uh, and so that's how it works. So we've looked at print working directory. We've seen change directory. We've seen list. We've seen clear. Uh, we've seen make a directory. We've seen cat. Now we just need to do some removing files. And so to do that, I'm going to go back into temp. I'm going to clear everything out. I'm going to ls. And now let's say I want to remove, <clears throat> let's, uh, I don't know, remove main. So I'm just going to remove main.css and then ls and main is gone. What if I want to remove assets? I want to do remove and then with a flag. That's a flag. Remove recursively re with force. Recursively means just over and over and over. Run, run this command until everything is done. Uh, recursion. The definition of recursion is recursion. <laughs> recursion is kind of like just do the same thing over and over. It's a function that calls itself. It's weird. Uh, anyhow, remove recursively with force assets. And so that just means like uh, you've pulled out the big bomb and you're going to completely destroy assets. Assets is now gone and anything that is in it is gone. And all we have left there is index.html. All right. So there are a few basic commands for working with the terminal. And that's, uh, you know, basic terminal commands. And that's like what you'll use the vast majority of the time. So just play around with those for a little bit until you have them down. And then you might want to print this out and paste it on your wall, tape it on your wall next to where you're working. And, uh, and that'll just be a good reminder uh, as you work, you know, um, for uh, how you do uh, different commands using the terminal.